welcome back to the channel. Finally, the sun's come out in the UK and we can get some solar charging going on. And also there's been a big update to MeshCore version 1.4 and that's what I'm gonna show you today. So let's get started then. So as well as the usual kind of updates and stuff that address various bugs, stuff that you guys report are generally fixed and pushed out in these new updates. So one of the things was Bluetooth. It was a little bit kind of flaky and it kind of made contact lists kind of change and stuff like that. So that has been addressed now. So it should be a lot more stable and, you know, all should be good there. But aside from that, there's some really cool new features that I'm going to show you um, that have been added to the app. So as you know, on the mapping screen, this is kind of a real RF kind of representation of what you've received over the air. This is nothing to do with the internet. But because the internet map that we have on our website has actually proved quite useful for people, what we've actually done is we've added the internet map to this app. So this now allows you to see all of the nodes and repeaters that people have added to the map. So you can see the UK is looking pretty busy here and as we pan out you see obviously Europe and you know there's some activity in, in the States now and Australia. I think there's a little bit down there. There should be more than that. I think you guys need to get on this and add more of your nodes to the um to the map there so how do you go about adding yourself or even removing yourself if you don't want to be on this map you're not going to get added automatically but there is the chance that somebody else might add you so let's take a look on the meshcore website just to see how we can kind of manage that so on the meshcore.co.uk website we can hit on map and this brings up basically the same map as we've just seen in the app it's running from the same um, system and we can see all of the nodes and repeaters and stuff like that on this map. Now, to add yourself to this map, you can just hit this little blue button down here and you get an instruction which tells you how to do that. So this is telling you to insert your MeshCore link. And to get your MeshCore link, what you do is you go back to the app and then you tap on the little kind of beacon button on the top here and you'll see advert to clipboard. Once you've adverted to clipboard, then you can head back to the map and you can paste your MeshCore link. And that works you know, you can add, I'm not going to add myself because I've already done this, but you can then add that and it will add, add your node to this map. If you want to be removed from the map, you can just sort of tap anywhere here and then you see down the bottom right, we've got node deletion request. So just hit that and then you'll be able to send an email to get yourself removed. So just another thing to add to this, if you really do not want to be on the map or have any chance of anyone adding you to the map, then you can just remove your coordinates from the settings section of the MeshCore app. In fact, if you haven't actually added your coordinates to the app manually, then they won't be there anyway because we don't have any automatic way of gathering your location from the phone or from the GPS of the actual companion radio or repeater or anything like that. So this is a really good way of sharing with others, you know, if you want to be seen on this map and you want to obviously be contactable, this is a really good way of doing it. Now, one thing to bear in mind with this, if you do actually sort of find somebody on this map here and say, oh, I want to talk with um, TM Meshcore, for example, you can add the contact into your contact list. But because of the way the encryption works on Meshcore, both of you need to be in each other's contact list before you can actually exchange messages. Now, the reason it's done this rather than like an auto discovery, everybody sees everybody in their list, like obviously Meshtastic does, it's to preserve bandwidth because we do not have a lot of bandwidth on lower. And it's very important that we keep the bandwidth free for messaging. That's what Meshcore does best messaging. So there is a side effect to not having beacons flying around and nodes broadcasting their positions and making themselves known that they're there in an area. And that is if you're new to this, then you might actually kind of turn on a radio or set up your system and never see anyone. So that's where this internet map is really handy because it allows you to see others on that map that actually want to be found because not everybody actually wants to be discovered automatically, which I think is quite important. But if you do want to be found and seen as available, you can flood advert your companion radio like so, and you can also flood route your repeater by logging into your repeater. I'm not going to do that here. You also have the public channel as well, which is a highly social place for people that just don't care who they're talking to <laughs> most of the time. And yeah, it's just a lot of fun to sort of hang out there as well. So whilst MeshCore can be super private, it can also be very, very public as well. So that's the internet map. Great new feature, really useful. I'm sure you guys are gonna have fun with that. Next up, we have a new menu up here called Tools. And if you hit the tool menu, you can see we've now got a trace path feature. And this is incredibly cool if you manage 
a mesh and you've got managed a bunch of repeaters and you want to actually get into the nitty gritty and find out what's actually going on um, with the system there. So this is not for everyone. This is more kind of like diagnostic stuff, but it's, it's incredibly interesting this. Um, so what we can do is we can go into this one here, which is the map again, and we can basically just zoom right in. So you can see here, this one here is me. This is the device, the rack device that's connected to this tablet. And then there's two repeaters here as well. Now I've spaced them out so it's a bit easier to see what's going on. But what you can basically do here is you can tap on a repeater and then tap on another repeater, like a distant one over here. So I'm going to go all the way over to this one over in Epin. And then I'm, so I've done a route from one, two, and then I need to go and hit this again to say I want to come back to this point. So it's doing a complete round trip there and back. And what you can do is run the trace and then you'll get a bunch of signal to noise ratios and a round trip down the bottom. You saw that 845 milliseconds. You can see all of the individual hops. So if you tap on one of these, hop one from Hartford Yagi to the Epin repeater, I'm getting a signal to noise ratio of 0.5 dB, which is incredibly strong. Um, coming back from there, Epping to Hartford Yagi, we're on uh, minus 14.75, so it's not quite as strong coming back. And then obviously we're doing a little loop round here um, to go backwards and forwards uh, from my rack companion to the repeater that's outside um, the window behind me here. So if we tap on that one, you see Andy Rack to the Hartford Yagi hop number zero. So it is it's incredibly cool to be able to do, um, you know, a round trip thing like that. So if we just run it again, you can see, you know, the tra it's not trace route. It's not trace route as we know it. If you come from Mestastic, that is not what it is. This is actually a proper defined path that you can test to see where your um, what your signal is like on each hop. You remember on trace routes on Mestastic, you just hit it and just hope for the best and maybe something will come back someday. But most of the time, it would probably have rooted halfway around the country before it actually even got back to you. <laughs> so, so that's um, that's that. So you can do this with as many as you like. You could just, you know, put lots of repeaters in that chain and test out, you know, all the all of the links. It, incredibly cool. So, as well as doing this on the map screen, which is the most easiest way to kind of visualise what's going on, what you can do is you can actually do this manually as well so you can use the sort of more traditional way that we enter repeater lists here so we could say we want to go from Hartford Yagi to Epping repeater and then obviously do those pick those two there but we are going to actually have to add in the final destination there as well because the last repeater in that chain you need to be able to hear directly so the, t the one that's connected to this tablet needs to be able to hear that repeater and then if we run the trace there you'll see it comes back and you get this list view which actually tells you on each step what's happening and you can also see the duration so it's quite interesting to see how long these packets take to actually kind of do their round trip so everything needs to be updated for this to work and um, repeaters need to be updated to 1.4 um, plus and also the companion radios need to be updated as well so guys that just about sums up firmware 1.4 on MeshCore and the app version 1.7 the firmware is out now on the web flasher so you can update your devices there the app store apple app store and the google play store have the latest versions of the app so you're good to go. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Don't forget, like this video and subscribe if you're not already. Go check out the Discord. There's loads of discussion happening on there on my Discord. So link is down below to that and a load of other useful links down below as well. Catch you next time.